We live now? Yes. Here it is. Wow! It's like every other iPhone unboxing. Literally ever. Designed by Apple in California. Look at this. You get a SIM removal tool. You get... Ah, yes. The same Apple stickers that I got literally with my iPad 2. The same ones. They've redesigned their retail stores, making them town halls. But they haven't made the process of turning everything you own into an obnoxious, fake Apple product any different in years. What else do you get? You get usually a phone, unless you uh, bought it on eBay and you got screwed. You get a power adapter. You get some ear pods. Now with lightning connector, also the lightning to uh, less lightning, three and a half millimeter adapter. And you get a USB cable. So there. I don't even know why you guys tuned in for this. You should be ashamed of yourselves. iPhone 10 unboxing? Really? I've actually already filmed my review. Some of you may or may not have noticed that uh, this is clearly People not are saying a brand it's laggy. iPhone. There's nothing I can do about that whatsoever. But what I can do is I can reveal the big joke, the big surprise. I actually want to be over here. So I'm going to need you to go over there that this wasn't clickbait because I actually do have the most important tech product right now in my hands and it wasn't an iPhone. This is the ASUS WSC621E Sage which provided that the video bitrate is high enough you guys could have read for yourself without my help but I wanted to read it because it was exciting. So this is ASUS's new flagship workstation board. It has literally everything. I mean it. Literally everything. It supports two CPUs. It has 12 memory sockets. It supports four-way crossfire and SLI. Features that are completely worthless today. But damn it, it has them. And it even is compatible with Windows 10. Windows 10. The best motherboard. The best selling. Alright, let's open this baby up. Now this, this is the kind of box that I can get excited about opening. Okay, so there's our I.O. shield. This is actually quite typical of a WS board. You don't really get a ton of I.O. This is, this is pretty good. So we got dual LAN, we got uh, eight USB ports, USB BIOS flashback, PS2 port, and audio. That's one of the biggest differences between a WS board and a server board, is that audio. Now this is like a, I, I, I don't know how much this thing costs, but it's like somewhere between 650 and like 800 US dollars, like things ridiculous. So uh, I mean it's really the least they could do to include a high bandwidth SLI bridge. So that's nice to see, although I hate the spacing of the one they've included. Um, in fact, I wish instead of including three-way and four-way bridges, they had actually just given me a couple of different options for high bandwidth, because this is going to put the cards right up next to each other. This is a fun one. Check this out. We've got a VGA PCI bracket. Now, you might scoff at that. VGA? Really? On a motherboard like that? But this is actually going to come in handy for what I have planned for this board. Uh, here's a serial uh, bracket. Um, and then, uh, yes, a USB 2 rear bracket. Haven't seen one of those in a while. Also an M.2 adapter do that. All right, over here we've got uh, yeah, discs, blah, 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 SATA cables, lots of SATA cables. Wow, there must be a lot of SATA ports. And we've got a manual. Enjoy. Okay, let's move right along here. So, the first thing the keen-eyed among you will probably notice is that this is not a standard ATX motherboard. It's a standard, but this is, I believe, SSIEEB, if I recall correctly. Hold on a minute. I didn't uh, brief myself on this thing before I started. EEB form factor. Okay, where did I put my, uh, my test bench? Okay, okay, here, here, here. So quick size comparison here. 
So this is a Zenith Extreme. This is a Threadripper board with like eight memory slots, plus their DIM.2 thing for putting more M.2. So this is already wider than a standard ATX board. This is what this looks like next to it. This thing is ridiculous. So over here, let's do a quick, uh, put it on a nice, safe, anti-static surface like this box. Oh man, look at this thing. All right. So let's start from the top. This is dual socket 3647s. So I don't even have a single cooler in the building that is compatible with these things. Um, also, unlike previous WS boards, so the board that we used for 7Gamers 1 CPU, this is now using the server socket rather than the uh, high-end desktop and workstation socket. So this is a completely different socket from LGA 2066, which is where you'll get an Extreme Edition or one of their new workstation line of Xeons. So uh, if I wanted to use this for the WS purposes that are on the box, I would actually have to get a little creative about my choice of Xeon. Fortunately, I do have something in mind. So this puppy just comes off here like this. This is actually the same socket as the Xeon Phi 64 core processor that we checked out recently. But the difference between the chips that go in here and the chip that uh, went in there is that these ones only go up to 28 cores, but these are full power cores. They're not clocked at like one point whatever gigahertz or whatever. So uh, I guess the mounting system involves these threaded bits here, these posts here. There's a fat one and a thin one that... They are really serious about you not accidentally putting this thing on wrong. Oh, that's not that protective, though. Okay, all right, it's on there, okay. Okay, now let's talk memory slots. So because these processors support six channel memory, we've actually got six DIMM slots per CPU. So you can see pretty much the entire top 40% of the board is taken up by these gigantic CPU sockets. Uh, oh, 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 uh, does anyone have an LGA 11 5X CPU handy? Someone hit me with one? Uh, uh, would that be quick or would that be slow? Um, um, well, I'm live right now. So, are you sure you don't just have one handy? No? Okay, whatever. Here's, uh, here's an AM4 CPU. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Carry on. Okay. Okay, so to put this in perspective, uh, AMD's AM4 CPUs are a touch bigger than Intel's current gen, I think. That's what that looks like. Also, here's a Ryzen Threadripper. So this socket even makes a Ryzen Threadripper look normal. Pretty sick. All right. Um, in terms of power for this bad boy, what have we got here? So it needs a 24 pin, as you'd expect. Uh, there wasn't any room for it along the right hand edge of the board because that was all taken up by, I'll get to those later, but mostly dim slots. Then you need two eight pins right over here and here. So you actually get a dedicated eight pin for each CPU. And you also get an additional six pin here for the seven PCI Express 16X slots. Now, they're all 16x physical, but they aren't all wired for 16x. But remember, with two 3647 CPUs in here, I believe that's a total of 46 PCIe lanes per CPU. I could Don't quote me on that one, maybe 44 or something like that. Anyway, the point is you got a lot of PCIe lanes, and these ones are doing 8x, and these guys here, 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 and here are doing 16x, and there's still lots left over to run this micro SD slot. Yes, my friends, that is a micro SD slot built right into the motherboard. Bet you never thought you'd see that one. Uh, there's actually a good reason for that. Now, a lot of workstation and server boards actually have onboard USB ports, like full, si like full external USB ports, and it's for running the OS. If you're running an OS that runs off of USB, like uh, some Linux stuff does. So uh, when I run Unraid on this, yes, my friends, I will be using this for a follow-up to 7Gamers 1 CPU. I'm actually hopefully going to be able to throw it on my SD. Actually, I don't know if Unraid supports that. Either way, we'll figure it out. All right, bringing you guys back down here. So around this 6-pin auxiliary power, we've got four U.2 ports. 
So these are for high-speed SSDs in a two and a half inch form factor. So like in uh, Intel 750 series or even <sighs> Optane SSDs. Yeah. So we've got support for four Optane SSDs off a single board without requiring any PCI Express adapters. Sick. Then 10 more SATA ports meaning that we can throw mass storage on here and we can run our VMs off of these high speed ports here. Just in case that wasn't enough, it does have a single M.2 slot right here, so you can install as long an M.2 as you could possibly want. A couple front USB 3 headers because, you know, whatever, you're, you're hashtag YOLO swagging it already, you might as well go for it. And uh, then what else? Ah, yes my VGA output, this guy right here. So the reason I'm gonna use that is because that way, the plan here is to load up six of these slots here, at least six of them, with high-end graphics cards, use the onboard graphics for Unraid, and then uh, what was I planning to do with the seventh one? What was I planning to do with the seventh one? I had a plan, there's a plan, don't worry about it, there's a plan, anyway. Uh, okay, on the back, we've got, uh, I guess I kind of alluded to all of this already, USB 3, USB 3.1, 10 gig, whatever, uh, PS2, and audio. Now, right, the things I'm going to put in it. So right here, fresh off eBay, are two, I say cheap uh, in sort of a relative sense because these are Intel Xeon 28 core processors and the seller who's based in China actually uh, hold on here I'll let you I'll let you go stare at these while I go uh, figure out who I bought them from uh, upgraded my shipping because I said that I needed to do a video quickly and I said I'd say who I got them from which uh, could end up being a problem if they if they don't end up working I already left positive feedback based on the fast shipping, but uh, I don't know. You never know with, uh, with those eBay sellers. Sorry, I'm signing into my computer. I'm signing to eBay. This is the problem with live and the fact that I don't prepare anything. Uh, okay, so these ones actually weren't the cheapest ones. I actually bought two different sets because I wasn't really sure you know, if either of them were actually going to be real, because to buy Intel's top-of-the-line 28-core CPU is somewhere between seven and $10,000 each. And I bought this set of two, apparently, 28-core 8176Ms. So it's like an $8,000 CPU. I bought two of them for four grand. Now, they're engineering samples. They're not claiming that they're retail, but uh, so I got those from uh, 1B9. 1B9, which is not a droid from Star Wars, even though it kind of sounds like one. And then the other ones were from, oh man, that, that is a story and a half. These, these guys are so sketchy. Am I showing this? Uh, no, it's okay. I was like, look, the model number you guys are quoting in your eBay listing um, doesn't exist in Intel Arc, so how can I be sure that they're 28 core? And they're like, I don't have any of that information. And I'm like, well, your listing says 28 core, um, so can you send me a screenshot? They're like, uh, I'm not te very technical. I'm like, well then, why don't you go ask whoever created the listing, because it says 28 core. And they're like, I don't, I'm not able to do that. And I'm like, well, who created the listing? Is it 28 core or not? They're like, you will have to check. And I go, how am I supposed to check? You got a model number that doesn't exist. There's no reference to it other than a serve the home forum thread that references that eBay listing. So unless I buy them, those ones were only 1300 each though, so unless I buy them, I have no way of finding out. So that one's not here yet. I definitely intend to check that out pretty soon, but these ones are supposedly uh, 8176Ms. So the retention mechanism here is pretty trippy. I'm like really not sure how this goes in, but uh... uh Wait, do you know how it works? No. I legitimately don't know how this works, but it seems to go in a little something like... That. And then there, is this a hole in the IHS? What the hell? Holy crap! That that is a hole. That's a hole in the IHS. Holy crap! All right. Well, I think what I'm gonna have to do for the meantime is just like take a big heatsink and like stick it on there, and then just like put something heavy on top of it. Um, 
Because yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have any coolers. Um, I definitely want to fire this thing up pretty soon though, because this just arrived from Kingston. This is the last part of the unboxing. So Kingston sent over 12 sticks of their 2666. So this is the maximum memory speed officially supported by these processors. Um, 32 gig 2066 sticks. So that will give the finished system here 384 gigs of memory, something along those lines. Don't remember exactly. It's a lot of math and my brain is bad. Um, but pretty much, instead of doing gaming this time, I'll be using this platform for, in theory, six 8K video editing workstations running off of a single board. So each one of them is going to get, so we've got 56 cores total, so each one of them will get, uh, let's say 10, uh, will get about eight cores, eight cores, 64 gigs of RAM, and a dedicated graphics card running off of a maybe RAID 0 Optane array. So they could end up actually faster than running dedicated hardware. So that was my unboxing of the most important tech product. It had nothing to do with this, except that I used it to get you guys to watch it. It's amazing that it's the best phone. OK, OK, thanks, Ed. In case you guys didn't clue in, it's, it's Ed filming today. You can end it. Boop. <laughs>